welcome, welcome, welcome everybody back to another episode of the Trans Lesson Plan, your go-to podcast for transgender history. As always, I'm your host, Mark. And it is an absolute pleasure to be back here with you all on this Sunday afternoon. Now, as you all may know, I was gone last week. If you listened to last week's episode, I went to Chicago to visit my dad's side of the family and my dad, of course. Um, and I had a fantastic time with my family. Um, I got to see all my my cousins, my uncles, and all that stuff. I got to meet my baby cousin for the very first time, which was fantastic. Um, I took her and, and one of my other cousins to the zoo, and I think we had a, a, a very fun time, to be completely honest with you. I was tired after the very chaotic uh, weekend of that, but uh, it was well worth it. If you follow me on Instagram, you'll see the pictures that we took when I was at the zoo. Very cute, very adorable. Um, but I'm happy to be back. Uh, While I was going, I also finished my first session of the summer semester of graduate school. So it was kind of weird how I described that. But basically, summer semester at my school has two sessions. So there's session A, session B. So I literally just finished session A. Uh, I don't know what my grade is yet. I just know that last time I was kind of going through it, I had got an A. So hopefully, you know, we can keep that A. So I did that, which was balancing that plus, you know, work plus other things, extracurriculars I do outside of work and all that stuff. It's, uh, it was a little challenging, but I did it and hopefully I, I, I walk out with that A. So that's kind of all that happened while I was gone. Um, today, I have a brand new episode for you all as we close out season five. Um. Now, I know that I took last week off, so technically the turnaround time for season six will nine times out of ten be next week, only because I feel as though I owe y'all that. Like like I said, I took a week off. This episode that I'm airing right now probably should have been last week, but I didn't have enough time. I recorded two episodes the week before then, so you know, I was like, hey, take the week off, do this episode this week. I could bless my followers with, or my listeners, with giving them season six a little bit earlier than I anticipated. Because normally once I finish a season, I take a week off, and then I come back and give you a brand new season. Excuse me. So uh, I think I'm going to do that. I think I'm going to do that for y'all. So season six will drop next week. And today we wrap up season five with a brand new episode. So before I get into that, I like to always say welcome everyone to the Trans Lesson Plan, whether you're a new listener or returnee. The last day of Pride is upon us, sadly. I uh, had a very crazy Pride month. I didn't do anything too exotic for Pride. Uh, I went to a couple of events and stuff like that, but Pride in Atlanta doesn't start till October. So that's when all my chaos will happen. Uh, <laughs> so I did a little bit of surprise stuff. I meant to go to Chicago Pride, didn't get the opportunity to go because of my crazy schedule. Um, I was tired too after everything I was doing. So like trying to go out and party after hanging out with kids in the morning and run around to see to see family. It was just a lot. So I didn't get to go, but next year we'll definitely be on the books. Probably alongside New York Pride, to be completely honest with you. Um now Chicago Pride is still today. Yeah, like the parade is today, but last week it was like the festival. So like you can go to the bars and see the concerts and stuff today. It's just a parade, so it's a little different. But like I said, next week I'll be there. I think New York's is today as well. So shout out to all those who are having their pride festivals today and the parades. Be safe, of course. That's what I always like to say. Um, as we wrap up Pride, I'd like to say thank you to all of my listeners here today that's listening out to the podcast. If you are a new listener, welcome. I'd like to thank you so much for somehow finding out about this podcast, whether it is from some unknown source, but um, also taking the time to listen to today's episode. Uh, Just to give you a heads up, the Trans Lesson Plan is your go-to podcast for transgender history. It is not just really about history, but obviously it really serves as like a platform, right, for education, provide insights into the community, and, uh, you know, inspire understanding, inclusivity, you know, just get you more conversations about what it's like to, you know, 
be someone who identifies as trans as it relates to our very, 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 very long history. Um, each episode is intentionally designed to be concise yet comprehensive. So there, it is no longer than like 10, 20 minutes. Um, my overall goal is really to give you something to start with. And then, of course, you take that and learn more on your own time and along the way. So welcome to all my brand new listeners. I greatly appreciate you for taking out the time, taking the time, taking time out <laughs> of your day to listen to this episode. And of course, to all my returnees, welcome back. That's all I like to say. Um, you all make the podcast happen. You know what I'm saying? The subscriber count's going up. The listener count's going up. That means that y'all do y'all job out there. I'm promoting the podcast in any way, shape, or form. I greatly appreciate you. To follow up on my social media manager, I am still looking for one. Because <laughs> I, I know y'all probably are wondering, like, Mari, we need, like, stuff to share, you know? And, like, I have a couple of things on the on the trans to play Instagram, but it does need a lot more improvement. But I'm looking for one. If you know anyone who is interested in being a social media manager for this podcast, if you're really, really interested in helping out, I would greatly appreciate if you email me. You can email me at Amari, A-M-A-R-I, at the thetranslistenplan.com, just as a heads up, if you really, really want to. Um, you don't have to. Like I said, I'm still working on that. So, like I said, thank you to all of my returning listeners. I greatly appreciate you all so much for continuing to support this podcast and, like, putting your foot forward to making sure that this guy happens. So. To get started, as we wrap into today's episode. Now, today, of course, we, every time we have a podcast, it's really a journey. But um, I really want to uncover um, a transformative organization that made significant strides in the transgender community. Um, it is called the High Risk Project Society. Now, it's just kind of the title. Well, not really kind of. It is the title of this episode, but you know, I like to kind of finagle it, make it sound a little bit better. But this organization was founded in the heart of Vancouver, Canada, and it was actually a major force in advocating for transgender rights, serving really as a lifeline on providing essential resources for those in need. So with that, I want to get into the history of this organization and what it was like during the time of, you know, when all of this, I, when I tell the story, you, you'll understand a little bit more. So let's get into it. Now, the High Risk Project Society, and I will abbreviate this to HRPS, of course, because I don't want to keep saying this over and over again, especially as I'm going to be giving you all a very concise episode, um, came into existence during a bleak period when the rights and resources for transgender individuals were woefully inadequate, right? Nestled within the blistening downtown east side of Vancouver, the HRPS emerged as a beacon of hope. Really, for a multitude, a multitude, my apologies, of transgender individuals, particularly those who were marginalized and wrestling with additional challenges such as addiction and involvement in sex work. Now, the path they thread was fought with obstacles, as any LGBTQ plus organization knows. Uh, whether you're a nonprofit or you work for one, like myself, I understand that obstacles happen. It just, it just does. Um, guided by stalwarts like Sandra Fala, uh, I'm gonna say her last name so terribly, so bear with me. La Flamboy, F A L A F R A M B O I S E. For those who know me, you know I'm terrible with my dialect. Plus, this is also in a in the last name is not English, so <laughs> so La F- La Flamboy. I'm terrible. You guys get what I'm trying to say. And Deborah Brady. <laughs> uh, the HRPS had a traverse of complex, ever-changing landscapes, right? They were continually in a fight to secure funding. Like I said, somebody who runs a nonprofit and people who I know that run nonprofits know about funding. It is never easy. Um, strided to burden the narrow definition of what we like to call, quote unquote, uh, primary transsexuality ready to embrace a wider demographic, and had to challenge the real-life test, quote-unquote, as well, which is a continuous uh, continuous uh, process that often cruelly denied transgender individuals the critical medical care that they require. So um, primary transsexuality, like I said, is just a, a very, very long term from way, way back in the day, which has now been um, 
rebranded to transgender. So we all kind of get an idea of that. But the real life test or RLT is um, a concept where people feel as though transgender individuals should basically live, can they live a life like a normal human being, quote unquote. And obviously normal human being really is not a real thing. But like basically it's kind of like the concept of passing, right? Can this person pass in the real world and basically live a real life without being identified as someone as trans like that's really what it is and when you think about the medical field a lot of times they know sometimes they don't know like for example when i go into the medical field and i go get checkups and things like that um most of the time they can't they don't know right i like to tell people that when i work in the medical field and i always go to anybody i always go to like transgender care individuals anyway but for this example like if i was if i didn't have that option here in atlanta you know i would be like hey you know i'm trans just give you a heads up so as I'm telling you these things about my life and my health, I want you to know that although I present this way, that my medical conditions can be different because I still have woman anatomy. You know what I'm saying? Like stuff like that. So the real life tests, especially back in the day and the um, HRPS kind of originated, I think in the nineties, if I'm accurate on this, and I'll confirm that for you all real quick, that um, that still would deny individuals the proper health care they needed if they were to go in and get help. So that's what that means. Now, unfazed by these hurdles, the HRPS stood firmly, really, in its commitment that they reached out with resources to anyone who sought their assistance, you know, placing a particular emphasis on what I like to call the street entrenched primary uh, transgender individuals. Like they would, you know, go out to those who were, like I said, involved more in sex work, like I said, maybe homeless and stuff like that, which, as we know, is a group that's often neglected by society, uh, even still to this day. And the organization had also made a profound, made profound strides in advocating for the rights of transgender individuals, you know, basically including lobbying tirelessly for the inclusion of gender identity in the BC Human Rights Code. Now, I'm not 100% versed in Canadian, you know, um, history as it relates to the transgender community, gender identity, etc. I know that now they are very inclusive. Now, I have heard mixtures of that they still have some work to do but more inclusive than the united states of america and you know how the united states of america is especially right now with all the controversy of the political debates so what the presidential debate not to go into that but basically maintaining the operations of the hrps was no me feat as we could guess uh the organization frequently encountered disputes among its own members endured countless hours of unpaid work and was perpetually in the pursuit of always getting funding and securing funding. Now, yet despite these challenges, the HRPS may uh, managed to make remarkable contributions to the transgender community and actually played a pivotal role in advocating for recognition of transgender rights. Now, in the end, the HRPS had to reluctantly shut its doors, a decision that rooted in membership burnout and the aspiration of their key leaders to embark on new journeys, which is which happens very often, just to give you all a heads up. Like that's not abnormal that um things like this do occur. Um, so I don't want you all to freak out and be like, hey, like, that's terrible. Well, it is, but you know, like I said, new things come up and new things happen. You know, however, the legacy of the HRPS endures their relentless efforts paid the way for the acknowledgement of transgender rights, especially in uh in Canada, in the Canadian era, in Canadian era, in Canada. And they set a powerful uh president for the kind of targeted support and resources that marginalized communities need. So with that, as you all know me, if you listen to this podcast pretty often, if you're brand new here, I always like to do key takeaways, which is like very quick, you know, recaps about what basically what I just said and kind of how it impacts the transgender community. So some key takeaways I want to mention is that the first one, the high risk project society emerged with the other beacon of hope. Like I said, for many marginalized transgender individuals during the time when transgender rights and resources were severely lacking. And HRPS's mission involved navigating, like I said, these complex landscapes, you know, advocating to get secure funding, uh, like I said, broadening the definition of transsexuality at the time when it was uh, before transgender became the, the new terminology, 
and like I said, confronting that controversial real life test, quote unquote, um, that often, you know, impact the transgender individuals. Now, like I said, you know, despite the challenges that they did occur, you know, the HRPS was relentless in making sure that they provided the proper resources, you know, to groups that were often overlooked, especially those who were involved more in the street entrenched um, process of that. So the HRPS, like I said, made significant strides in advocating for the rights of transgender individuals. And like I said, even including the lobbying of the inclusion of gender identity in the BC's human rights code. So, you know, although they had to close their doors, um, the story of HRPS, in my opinion, underscores the crucial role of intersectionality in activism, right? By focusing on these specific intersections of identity, we are able to provide resources to those who might otherwise be excluded from the broader LGBTQ plus community. So that's why I say today that the HRPS is remembered for its significant contributions to the transgender community, you know, its advocacy and its actions and serving as a foundation for the future, for future, not the future, for the future and future, the future as in today, and obviously future trans-focused community services as we see today, like different trans-focused um, nonprofit organizations or services that's offered out into the general public as well. So, <laughs> oh, we're bombing today, it's been a week. Um, as we reflect on the journey of the HRPS and their incredible impact, it is crucial to, like I said, make sure that we are aware of the potent reminder that people are multidimensional with intersecting identities that result in these diverse experiences of joy, struggle, and oppression. So as HRPS continues to focus on this and as uh, current organizations focus on this today, um, these specific intersections of identity, we are able to extend our resources uh, to make sure that we are um, getting those within even the marginalized part of this very broad LGBTQ plus community. So with that, that is it for today's episode on the High Risk Project Society. And I greatly appreciate you all for taking the time out today to listen to today's episode. Now, I love getting into the fiber history of trans history. I'm actually reading a brand new book right now that I am excited to share because I'm not really sure what to expect out of it. Um, I got the audio book because I got ADHD, but um, I can't wait to pull some of the stuff out of there and give you all the episode on the on what I find in that book as well. It's called Before We Were Trans uh, by Kit. Uh, he, he, um, and Kit, I apologize if you listen to this podcast and I'm saying your last name wrong. Um, but it's, uh, it's a very good book that I've been recommended. I got the audio book so I can listen to it today while I go to the pool or something. Um, but I'm going to take some things out of that, get some more history for you all and see what I can give as podcast episodes, maybe for season six, depending on how fast I finish it, maybe for season seven, who knows? But, uh, I thank you all, like I said, for coming out today. Greatly appreciate it. If you have not already, you can follow us on Instagram at the trans lesson plan on Instagram and Twitter. If you want to follow me, the host, Mari, you can follow me at Mari World. That is M-A-R three I's, W-R-L-D. Um, I have stickers that I'm going to be posting around the city of Atlanta. So if you do see one of the stickers, definitely take a picture, share it out with your with your followers and friends. You can't see it. Um, if you're listening to the audio version of this uh, podcast episode. But if you are looking listening in on the video version on my youtube channel this is what it will look like um my lady it will be posting these around the city of atlanta so if you're like a little five points i know some friends who want some nonprofit organizations as well i want to try to post them there the community services and all that good stuff i'm gonna have those around so uh stay tuned for that if you are interested in the stickers they are on my on the trans plant instagram just give me a dm i will be happy to share those with you all if you know that a place that you want to put it, record shops or something like that. Um, I would greatly appreciate it. You know, the, the, the bigger the word we get, the larger uh, this this podcast will grow. So um, with that, thank you all so much. Like I said, season six will be next week. So stay tuned for that episode. Uh, don't forget to tell a friend, a family member to listen to the podcast. If this is your first time listening to today's episode, please subscribe. Greatly appreciate it. 
And um, I appreciate everyone who has been writing uh, good reviews. There have been the bigots in the review comments of my podcast, which happens, which I knew would happen. Um, so for those who have been backing up the podcast and just kind of silencing that noise, I greatly appreciate you all as well for continuing to support. Um, so with that, thank you all so much for giving me a little bit of your time on your Sunday afternoon. Um, I hope you all have a great rest of your week. Happy 4th of July. If I don't get to say it to you all beforehand, take the day off, have a good time. And I will see you all next week. Peace. <laughs>